Now, live from the Quad Cities, this is CBS 4 News This Morning. A new school with a new crop of students, and it may be getting a new name. States, and as a result, and yeah. former presidential candidate Mitt Romney makes a stop in Iowa. Good morning, I'm Emily Scarlett. And I'm meteorologist Kyle Keel in for Anthony Peoples. And if you're looking out the door this morning, or the window I should say, <laughs> uh, you may be noticing some dry conditions and perhaps a little bit of patchy fog, but that's not going to be the case as we go into the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, well I noticed even driving in this morning, the sky looked sort of weird. I know you've been talking about visibility this morning, so you can see something's going on out there. Yeah, definitely. We are uh, having a little bit of warm air this morning. Temperatures about 20 degrees warmer than what they were yesterday morning. And of course with a lot of low level moisture, we do have some areas of fog. Right now here in the Quad Cities, visibility about a mile. We're less than a mile, in fact, a half a mile in Clinton, Sterling, and Burlington. And Galena sitting at an eighth of a mile. And uh, this fog will burn off as we go uh, within the next couple of hours as that sun does rise. But these temperatures, again, remaining steady all morning long. 55 right now in the Quad Cities, 51 degrees in Galena. And as we go throughout the next uh, few hours, we will start to see these temperatures warm up just a little bit. But as we do increase the cloud cover, I guess thicken the cloud cover, and we will get the chance for rain in the afternoon. These temperatures not warming up too much. In fact, we are watching this area of low pressure and upper level low down in Oklahoma that will continue to move northeastward as we go throughout the morning and afternoon. It's going to bring this moisture along with it. And as you can see, some heavier pockets of rain will be in here by the time we get into the afternoon. Let's go ahead and track this all out with Stormcast HD. Doing a pretty good job at 7 o'clock, keeping most of us dry. Could see a few patchy areas of drizzle, especially west of the Mississippi River. But we're going to continue to see this moisture move northward by around lunchtime. That's when our southern hometowns could get in on the rain. All of us into the action as we go into the later parts of the afternoon and evening. Even a few pockets of uh, heavier rain as well. But you can see the thunderstorms, the main bulk of the severe weather will be down to the south. So we will not have to deal with any severe weather as we go into the afternoon and evening hours. As we go throughout the overnight, could see a few dry pockets uh, across the area. But... We will continue to see that chance for rain as we go into the day on Tuesday, and not only on Tuesday, but Wednesday as well. So again, a very long period of rainfall here in the Quad Cities. Could see some moderate to heavier rainfall amounts as well. In fact, we could see widespread 1 to 2 inch rainfall totals, even a few areas getting in close to the 3 inch mark, especially west of the Quad Cities. And here's the rain chances for today. Again, the rain chances do go up to about 40% at noon and we really get in on the rain chances as we go later on this afternoon and especially into the evening and overnight hours. So again, have the umbrella and the rain boots ha handy as we go into the afternoon hours. 64 degrees for your daytime high with the afternoon showers and storms. We will see an easterly wind from 5 to 15 miles per hour as we take a quick look at the seven day, keeping the rain chance through Wednesday, then drying out with temperatures in the middle and upper 60s by Thursday. Emily? Thanks, Kyle. Lots of changes coming to Hamilton Elementary in Moline, and one of them could be its name. Ashley Richmond gives us an exclusive look at what a new name could mean for the school. With a new and improved Hamilton Elementary, it could come a new name. And school leaders say the goal is to make every student feel at home. We want to create those new memories for the students of next year and future years to come at the new site. At tonight's school board meeting, the opening of the new school subcommittee will ask the board to consider renaming the current Hamilton School. Along with the new name would come a new mascot and school colors. The recommendation stems from the fact that the new school will contain students and families from six other schools. And district leaders say the majority of the families will not be coming from the previous Hamilton School. We want them to relish in that opportunity because it's been over 50 years since we built a new school in, Mol in the city of Moline, and we think it's very special, and we want that to reflect everything and not, not look in the past, but maybe look into the future. The recommendation to change the name, mascot, and school colors of Hamilton Elementary goes before the school board tonight at 6 o'clock at Garfield Elementary. If you'd like to attend, the meeting is open to the public. Ashley Richmond, CBS 4 News this morning. Thanks, Ashley. The Iowa U.S. Senate race between Bruce Braley and Joni Ernst remains one of the tightest in the nation. And after a recent heated debate right here in Davenport, a new poll shows a virtual dead heat.
The Des Moines Register Bloomberg Politics poll shows the Republican Ernst with a one-point lead over Democrat Bruce Braley. That poll of 1,000 likely voters conducted between October 3rd and 8th has a margin of error of 3.1 percent. And Ernst getting some help from former presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Romney back in Iowa last night, appearing at an Ernst rally in West Des Moines. Romney spent most of his time bashing the policies of current President Barack Obama, who of course defeated Romney in the 2012 election. Romney will appear alongside Ernst at another event today in Cedar Rapids. Braley and Ernst will meet next week in Sioux City for their third debate. And here on CBS4, we'll be airing a debate for you on October 19th. What would you ask the candidates? Post your questions on our Facebook page, WHBF-TV, and your question may be selected for Sunday's debate. The average age of someone who falls victim to sex trafficking is 13. About 100,000 American kids do so each year. It's shocking statistics like these that inspired a local sex trafficking awareness organization to make a documentary. Natalie Zeroni shows us how the inspiring stories of three survivors could change perceptions here in the Quad Cities. When I wanted to get out of it, I wasn't able to get out of it. Sarah Kellums was trapped forced into sex trafficking for a year when she was in her early 20s. I just kind of felt like I had to be there. Sarah's one of three women interviewed in Any Kid Anywhere, sex trafficking survivor stories. In the documentary, these women bear their souls to the world, telling their story to inspire some good. Having our stories sh shared um, definitely is an eye-opener that it is happening. The documentary was made by two local filmmakers, Tammy and Kelly Rundle. They were hired by Breaking Traffic, an anti-sex trafficking organization in the Quad Cities. The group saw a need to have a documentary that shows local sex trafficking survivors. We've had, you know, a number of cases here in the Quad Cities, so we made this film um, and enlisted the help of three local survivors to really hit home to kids that this crime does happen here. It's not just a big city crime. It's not a crime that ha happens other places. The film is being shown to the public now, but its main audience will eventually be students. Some Quad City schools will be showing the film as part of Breaking Traffic's outreach program, Traffic Jam. It's something Sarah wishes she'd had as a teen. For me, it would have helped if I knew other people going through it or thinking about my choices. And um, one thing that I realized is I had choices that I made and they weren't always the best decision. And I think that they, those decisions could be avoided. Telling her story so others don't go through what she did. Natalie Zeroni, CBS 4 News this morning. Thanks, Natalie. And Breaking Traffic is having another screening of their documentary coming up Tuesday, October 21st at St. Ambrose University. Just call the number on your screen to register. And if you'd like a DVD copy of the documentary, go to breakingtraffic.org. And I was honored to represent Breaking Traffic last night at the annual Dancing with the Stars of the QC. Several local celebrities had a chance to show off their moves for charity, all hoping to win the big jackpot of ticket sales for our favorite charity last night at the Golden Leaf Banquet Center. Attendees could vote for their favorite dancer by placing money into voting boxes. It's, it's a great uh treat for us to have uh, someone dedicate their dancing to breaking traffic and uh, we're really uh, very uh, supportive of Emily doing this. Well, sadly, I didn't win this year's competition, but I had a blast taking part. More than 60 tickets were sold for the event, and all that money will be spread out to several local charities. Congrats to this year's winner, Angie Sharp. So Kyle, I mean, I, I had a really great time. Sure, I would have liked to win, but it, mm -hmm. it was really all just for a great cause. I'm sure all of the dancers felt like winners because it was just such a great night. Definitely, and it seems like Breaking Traffic was very appreciative for you uh, helping them out with that event. And I, I heard you did a great job dancing, well, and it sounds like you had a lot of fun too. I did, I had a really good time, and if you thought my dancing was great, then <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> all right, well, good job and congratulations thank to you, you. Thank you. and to Breaking Traffic. And as you head out the door this morning, a little bit of patchy fog and perhaps some light drizzle, but as you look down to the southwest, you can see that we do have some rain headed our way. I'll detail how much you can expect coming up next on CBS 4 News This Morning. You're watching CBS 4 News This Morning with Emily Scarlett and meteorologist Anthony Peoples. This is CBS 4 News This Morning.